welcome to Playing With Fire, the podcast for people who are ready to custom build their love. We're talking about non-monogamy, however you design it, as an individuation opportunity. Want to leave the default and make your life spectacularly you? You're in the right place. Hi, everybody. Hi. (laughs) So you're listening to us because we talk about a bunch of subjects that you care about, right? I I think that's why people are listening, yeah. Maybe more importantly, I think people listen because they like hearing that there are other ways to do relationships. Uh, Yeah. That doesn't mean you necessarily want to lead the way you're in. Nope, but it can be helpful to know what else is going on. Pictures and perspective. You might be listening because um, you're feeling a little voyeuristic. And you get the inside look at a non-monogamous relationship without actually having to be in one. And that's fine. Yeah, sure. I mean, for one thing, you're a bit of a show off. You like to be looked at. I mean, me too. I mean, I'm I'm a public And speaker. now we're on video. This it's, is great. This is, this okay. is everything. This, so, this is what was missing. For whatever for reason me. that you <laughs> whatever reason you are listening, I think the thing that all of us have in common is that we want to be more conscious about how we create our relationships. Great. One of the best tools I know for that is intentional experiments. Yeah. All right. Intentional, intentional, thoughtful experiments. Hey, what happens if we do this? Yep. We've been thinking about it. What happens if we do it? Right. But the the trouble with experimenting, um, you're a scientist. (laughs) What's the trouble with experimenting? Well, in order for it to be an experiment, you have to have something to compare it to. What happens when we don't do this thing? Then what happens when we do do this thing? And now, how are they different? Right. Which means... You have to do something. You have to do something. And um, you have to be clear about what exactly it is you're doing. Okay, so two elements. Yeah. On on the one hand, we have to do something. So um, one of the ways people show up in my world is um, because that they have been talking about doing something for a very long time. Talking and talking and talking, that's all great. Um, And... One or both of them have hit a wall and they're like, uh, we could talk about this until we die, <laughs> but we're not doing anything. So going to have to do something. But two, um, you have to know what it is you're experimenting with. And yeah. a thoughtfully designed experiment is not the same thing as opening up Tinder and saying, we let's go. No, because, um, well, experiments have a beginning and end. Right. Right. They, um, you start doing something, you do it for some amount of time, and then you stop so that you can look at what happened right. and not still be in it. So one of the tools that I use whenever I'm helping people design their experiments, and that, this happens in my group program, this happens in my private um, coaching, we design intentional experiments, and one of the tools that we put in place is a time box. There it is. Oh, that's it. That's the, we start here, we end here. Yeah. The, there's a really good reason for this. And, and it, it is, it, to your point, it is because we need to know that we're doing a thing. And if we just change the system. So let's say, let's get specific. Um, let's say that we want to experiment with um, overnights. Like you, we're going to, pre- we're going to see how we do having overnights where we are out of contact with each other. So if we start doing that and we don't time box it, we don't say like, here's our experiment. We're going to see how this goes. And then it's really easy to be like, okay, so we made the agreement that we have overnights and we just do that. We have no idea how this goes yet. And we've just changed the agreement and said, okay, so we are people who have overnights now. And then that's just decided and now it's just in perpetuity or until one of us is brave enough to say this isn't working or I need an adjustment. And then that's it. So you, we're, we're going to do this thing now. We're doing this thing now. At no point have we decided, I mean, we can't decide beforehand. So what are we going to do when X happens? Because we don't know what X is yet. Right. Because we haven't experimented. So until we have the opportunity to go back and say, oh, hey, this happened. 
So that's likely to happen again. What are we going to do about it when that happens? Okay, so here's how I see this. And yeah, spot on. Um, the time box introduces a, a, a static element into a really dynamic system. Oh, I see. So if you have a relationship and you want to try something new, you right off the bat, you've got two people at least in the relationship. And now you have whatever dynamic, whatever domain they're experimenting in, whatever dynamic, whatever you're changing. And then you have any other things that interact with the system. So other people, other jobs, other, other everything, all the stuff that happens in your life. So it gets really messy, really fast. Adding a time box and saying, we're going to try this from now till now offers one static element. And when I think about designing experiments, and I, this is when I think about designing psychological experiments too, I know that I need to have some things that I can control. Otherwise, I can't really ever write it up or talk about it in any sort of logical way. It just becomes this miasma of dynamic, changeable things. Yeah, I see. You've gotta have mm -hmm. some fixed things. If I wanna have some variables, I have to have some fixed elements too. So and since you scary. aren't, yeah, because you aren't fixed and I'm not fixed. Like no, a human yeah. can't be a fixed element. It's not possible. And the other humans in our life can't be fixed elements. Right. And so, yeah, we're kind of limited. Time in this particular instance can be a huge asset. And I like the time box also because it introduces a, a pre-commitment to when we will revisit, right? So relationship agreements yeah. and experiments are about revisiting. They're living, breathing things. Mm -hmm. So if we change, let's say we'll go back to that ex in the example of we're gonna we're gonna try out overnights and see how they go. Well, what if I have a, a person friend to experiment with and you don't during that period of time? Well, we're only gonna get part like so we're not gonna get uh -huh. all of the elements, but that could be okay. Like so we'll get the element, we'll get some information from that. Or maybe we're both seeing people, maybe we're both seeing multiple people and we want to try this out. And what I like about the time box is it's it introduces a natural time that we put before we start the exploration. Yeah. We put this time on to revisit. We put it on our calendar, literally put it on mm -hmm. our calendar. We're gonna we're going to check back in. No matter how awesome this seems to have gone, we're checking back in about how it's going. We're doing yeah. a debrief. We're, we're actually getting in, we're doing some processing, we're figuring out where we go from there. It is so common that I see people start a change. And since things are going pretty well, they're like, well, we'll just keep going. And there's no natural spot where they're like, well, we'll revisit until there's a problem. But there's no plan in, for the problem. So. so the only thing that creates a, a, pro, a time to process and revisit and renegotiate is a problem, which means you have a problem with your sample, right? Like it's a little bit, it, it introduces a really interesting problem. Like, oh, oh <laughs> I see. We're only going to revisit this when it becomes a problem is itself a problem. Yeah. We are not going to revisit this as long as it's working, which means we never celebrate. It's so, so we never celebrate. It's destructive testing. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna test this to failure, and then we're going to stop and review. Oh, that's not. There are whole books about why not to do that. Right. Uh, so if we were building an airplane, we would know this was a bad method. We would. I think and everybody I would, would agree. And I wouldn't want to be in the test. Uh, no. Want to be in the no. test subjects? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is why I introduced time boxes as a a really important element of consciously designing your relationship. So let's take this down a notch. Not everybody wants to explore having overnights at other people's mm -hmm. houses that we're romantically and sexually interested in. Um, how about something a little bit simpler, something that has come up for us before, which is just um, going away, traveling on our own. 
yeah, making okay. that a practice. Mm -hmm. Uh, you and I have a really, we have a really complicated and intricately woven life together. Um, so we don't have a lot of time apart. So when I was in grad school, having time when I was away and getting to travel on my own was, was part of the experiment phase. What happens when I travel right. on my own? And what I liked about it, we didn't know, I hadn't been this strategic about creating our intentional experiments at this point but they provided a natural time box because the trip was planned. They all the trips were always planned about 10 weeks out from, from, from when they would happen. So there was time to adjust to the fact that the time was going to the travel was going to happen. And then the trips had a defined length. And then they had a, the one thing that we had done and we had naturally done was we always celebrated at the end of them, mm -hmm. even if they had gone a little poorly. Because right. I dated while I was away, and yeah. you know, sometimes that didn't go super well. Sometimes it went well. Um, you were seeing people. Um, it was very interesting to me to have this natural endpoint where we were automatically celebrating. Yeah. What we were celebrating was, hey, look, we did that. Yeah. We survived. Some of it was great. Some of it wasn't. But... Yeah, I did want to come back to that because I was talking about the problems of destructive testing, but. But and you were already talking about it also eliminates the possibility of celebration of consciously saying, OK, we're done with that. How did it go? Wow, that went really well. Right. Even if you never stop people. doing it, it's harder to do that. It's not impossible, but it's harder. Right. So yeah. introducing these um, pre committed times when you will revisit just creates an opportunity for celebrating, for renegotiating things that are going well into even more, <laughs> you know, like yep. saying, oh, we've got this. Okay. Maybe we want to actually level up. Maybe we want to do more. And I, yeah, I think we could say it a hundred times actually celebrating, not just saying like pat on our back, but what do we want to do? Let's mark yeah. the occasion. Yeah. Let's actually notice what did we just accomplish? Because differentiating like doing experiments that help me understand who I am and you understand who you are and me understand who, that you are separate from me. Right. I want to celebrate that. Yeah. Yep. And it's this is one of the ways that monogamy and practicing, um, just practicing monogamy, even when we're like when it's by accident, because neither of us happens to be seeing anyone, mm -hmm. we can forget. I I we can fall into habit and all of a sudden we realize, oh, I've been taking you for granted. Right, exactly. That's what I'm thinking about. Not celebrating, it's <laughs> taking up strength. Right. And there's another thing, which I don't know, you're very good at taking responsibility for all your stuff and, and claiming what you want and being clear about that. I am less so. Um, and one of the things that time boxing like that does for me is at the end of the time, there, there's a natural predefined exit to the situation. Mm -hmm. So rather than me having to say i don't think this is working for me i want to stop doing it yes like okay it's going to stop anyway and i don't have to uh take the position of saying i would like you to stop doing this thing that's working really well for you because we because already pre-committed to to yeah. negotiating doing a review revisiting mm -hmm. it's um what do you call it in scrum a, a retro a retrospective a retrospective yeah that's what it really exactly. is yeah. right so when when I think about this, I usually am thinking about small bites, right? And this is what I usually advise people is start off with small bites, um, mm -hmm. like just you know, one domain of your relationship, um, a small time box. But Which, by the way, that's just good experiment design. Right. right? So we'll throw in a little kitchen sink. I right? call this a minimum viable agreement. Mm -hmm. This is what we work with. Very important process. I love it. It's really cool. I like working with people, especially in my group programs this way. But we have a great big time box in our relationship. I was thinking we've about hit, that. We've hit three of them. That's now. right. Yeah. So every three years, you and I have a full, um, a full stop in our marriage where we have to both decide to re-up. Now, obviously, the state handles marriage the way the state handles marriage, and I have some qualms with that, but whatever. They, but they that's, can do, a, that's them. That's, that's them irrelevant problem. to the... We have a written agreement, agreement yeah. as well as a commitment to each other that has been made in front of other people who we are happy to be held accountable by and to and with, that every three years, 
our relationship comes to a natural sort of conclusion and we both have to re-engage. In other words, it's a full exit option. Mm -hmm. And when I share this with people, frequently uh, they freak out a little bit. In fact, I was just recording, um, I recorded a long podcast with somebody, great guy, I'm, I'm excited the podcast went well, but um, this really, it kind of messed with his head, I could tell. He was like, wait, but wait, but why? If you take as a, as a, as a truth that marriage means it's forever, then divorce feels like the only option. But we've actually introduced another option. We introduced a, a fixed time when we will, no matter how things are going, good, bad, or indifferent, we will revisit. Now, one time that revisit came up while we were dealing with my brother's um, very specific, and I mean, it was really awful. Like my brother had just died after we had cared for him for almost a year in our house and all. And it was, it was not the moment to do that. So we put yeah. it off for a few months. Yep. So we did press a pause. It's not like we weren't humane to each other. We pressed pause and said, okay, instead of doing this in September, let's do it in January. But I love that time box. So do I. It it does um the ability to celebrate what's gone well. I uh, can't I can't overstate that. And to stop and look at it directly and not take it for granted is amazing. And for me, like in 2019, I was, I really did need a redesign. I was not even, there was oh, yeah. nothing mm -hmm. close to divorce in my mind, not at all, but I was at a major growth point. A lot had happened mm -hmm. and how we've been doing things, not so much in the sexual realm or like how we were overlapping our lives. It wasn't so much that it was, I felt a power differential that had crept in that just was not working for me anymore. Yep. And it was impacting our kink dynamic. It was impacting how we were parenting. It was impacting the care of the house. It, it impacted everything. Yeah. Thing. Mm -hmm. No, it was, it was time to revisit and review and look at how it could be better. I, that's the other thing that I love about it is every X amount of time for us, three years, we look for how we can make things better. That's it. And so yeah. on a smaller scale, um, the most recent experiment that I can think of that we specifically did um, was figuring out who was going to handle the logistics of our house. Right. And we were back and forth about this. And at first I didn't, I was struggling because I had handled the logistics of my household for a very long time. And you had stepped up more and more like, the whole time we've been together, but it was a time finally to say, like, oh no, okay, am I going to trust you to run the house? Right, like because you're going to be in charge, and I'm not going to be the decider. And I don't do it your way. Yes. And so that's uh, exciting. So we actually, commit to. Okay, we're just going to try this, and and I'll just I'll let you know if it doesn't work for me. I needed a much smaller <laughs> bite. Yeah. So we picked about a month. Um, I think it was, I think it was about a month, I say, because I think it wound up being like five weeks because of a particular thing that was going on in life. And it did not go perfectly. I was going to say, full disclosure, that did not go well. It didn't. But the thing is, it also led me to realize how, um, how I was approaching my own side of this, because I was being too controlling. I was not using the tools I know, and I advise people on, like, you got to let people do the jobs their way. We I mean, found shows. ourselves um, more aware of our otherness. I don't do things the way you do. And that had been a source of like confusion and consternation because I kept trying to do things the way you would. That doesn't, things don't go that well because I'm not you. Right. If I don't do them the way it works for me, they're not going to get done very well. And it was really interesting. Yeah, it's so disrespectful too. I, like, that's not actually how I want to treat you in the relationship. But when it comes to running the household, I could see how I had this just long habit of imagining that things had to be done my way. It was an imagination. Right. <laughs> and I still struggle with it. So now it's been a it's been a while. And this was sort of an evolution. I mean, you had you had been participating really fully in the house, but this was more specifically like, okay. 
I'm letting go. Yep. I have a business to run. Your supporting role has just become leading yeah. role on all of this. And yeah, the the, so the now time boxes let us review along the way. Right. And if it had been, and I mean, I think we picked a good length of time for the review. Because if it had been a year, that would have been too long. Yeah. Um, it, it would have been too just not enough checking in on how are things going for you? Like like setting the, the wheel on your boat and just letting it go for a year. Right. <laughs> you need a little more steering. Well, here's the thing that came up for me there. If, if, I, if it had gone for a year, unless I'd taken notes along the way, I wouldn't actually have known how yes. it had gone for yeah. a year. Mm -hmm. What I would have known is how it had gone, given how my memory works, what I would have known is how I'd felt for the last couple of weeks how it hmm. felt in my body for the last couple of weeks. Yeah. And I have had a vague idea, but mostly I would have had a story about how it had gone. A story I'd been telling myself about yeah. how it had gone, influenced thoroughly by all the things, including my hormonal balance and my mood and whatever anybody was bothering me with. And that's actually not as helpful. When we're trying to make a big change like this, it's far more helpful to have some data that's grounded in the right now. So that's why I like a short time box. I think it is one of the tools that is most overlooked and most readily accessible for us. And when you're making your agreements, yeah, I think try it out. See how it goes for you. If it's not great for you, then okay. But Thank I've seen you. it work so well so many times in our relationship and in my clients' relationships. So, so would you suggest that people pick an amount of time and try time boxing things during that time and then stopping at the end. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Scientist Man. <laughs> Excellent. No, I think, in fact, just choosing one thing yeah. to try changing and specifically putting on your calendar the date and time, like literally making a date together to do a retrospective on this thing and see how it goes and see if that in fact improves your ability to have an iterative process that allows you to improve your relationship strategically rather than haphazardly. And as ever, we would love to hear people's stories about how things go, yeah. what you chose, how the time boxing went and, and all of that. And so you can you can email me with, with your stories or more questions about this at ken at joliehamilton.com. Yeah. And if you are interested in my group program, I happen to have, have applications open right now. This is a really exciting process. The year of opening, yes, it is a year long. Yes, I have a good reason for it being a year long. Um, the year of opening is a supportive circle um, of people who come together because they want to strategically figure out what opening looks like for them. They're not all opening in the same way. Some will open all the things, some will open some of the things. Everybody though is gonna learn how to do their relationships with more skill and how to actually leverage what goes wrong into more intimacy. I love the year of opening. I, I really, really do. I love it. And um, if you're interested in that, you can actually go to um, talk to Jolie. And if you go to talktojolie.com, you can make an appointment to talk to me. And if you are interested in finding out whether you're ready for this, you can go to joliequiz.com and take a quiz to find out just how close you are on the scale of from, oh, well, no, we need a lot of foundations if we wanted to do this opening up thing, all the way over to, yeah, we're ready, let's go. And wherever you wind up on that scale, I will invite you into a conversation about what the next step might be, which doesn't have to mean jumping in head first into a pool. You have no idea what's in it. <laughs> okay. so, this was great. Thank you so much for a conversation that fit into a reasonable time box. Yes. And I think we've come to the end of our time box. Awesome. Thank you.